Good afternoon, everyone from Japan, and a very great sunny morning to all of you in Europe. I'm Yurita Rikamada, country representative for Eurocentric Japan. A very warm welcome to you all, those of you who are tuning in from both continents. And I would like to greet our esteemed speakers today. Let me introduce them one by one. Ms. Anke Siegmeier, Managing Director of Optimat and Photon uh, Photonics Network in Thuringia. Uh, Ms. Valerie Doldrup, Coordinator International Startup Campus Jena at Jena University. And Mr. Yoshio Takiguchi, the President of Tax System Initiative Corporation. Let me also introduce my colleague, uh, Mr. Tatsuya Maisawa, who is also a country representative of Europe, South Japan, and based in Kobe. So what can we expect in today's webinar? Well, this Europe, South Japan, Shinkansen Roadshow is a webinar series that focuses on EU-Japan collaborations. These cooperative partnerships aim to provide researchers, businesses, research institutions, and the general public with inspiration to how to actually start EU-Japan partnerships. And in this time, in this particular webinar, we are hoping to show you how collaboration in photonics between Jena in Thuringia, Germany, and in Hamamatsu Shizuoka, Japan, started, and how they actually built this very successful partnership. So let me actually call the first uh, um, speaker. Anke, if you would like to share your slides, and uh, then we'll be happy to hear your presentation about solving future challenges together. First of all, thank you very much uh, to your access um, and also my partners from Japan and also here from our region um, that you set up this webinar and the opportunity to present um, this great partnership that we have over long years. And um, it's always the interaction in between multipliers and um, agencies like you that make this um, uh, working together possible. So, and I really like this opportunity to present a bit on uh, our industry, our cooperation in between photonics. So what we uh, consider the technology of light, uh, photonics somehow also, um, for example, here in Central Europe, a, a bit more future oriented on photonics, silicon photonic integrated photonics. But here we are talking about everything about optical technology, uh, and uh, yeah, its application uh, side. So um, as announced, my name is Anke Siegmeier. I'm one of, one of the managing directors of Optonet, which is the Photonics Association, the network here in central Germany. You may have heard of Jena as the city where Carl Zeiss is originated. And we have a long tradition and um, large um, many opportunities, many businesses, science institutes that we are um, representing. And I'm uh, thanking you again for the opportunity to present a bit on our network, on our technologies here in the region and how and in how far we cooperate with Japan over the past and uh, in present, and maybe what we can do together uh, in future as well. So uh, we at the moment have 116 members here in the in our within our network. Um, Thuringia, as the, the uh, one of the federal states in Germany is called, uh, has a long tradition and a very dense uh, ecosystem in optics due to Carl Zeiss history. So he met. Um, uh, Ernst Abbe in the end of 19th century and Otto Schott, which was the beginning of this cluster, which at the moment looks like this. So we have uh, many interesting niche players, highly innovative international players, uh, the big ones called Zeiss Yin Optic um, and others, Fraunhofer Institutes, Leibniz Institute as well, uh, but many small and medium uh, sized enter enterprises, also startups that are within optical technology. And uh, it is due to um, the history uh, of Carl Zeiss that also after the Berlin Wall came down, many of the department leaders, Carl Zeiss that time had everything in-house. Um, so the components, of course, optical components, um, the mechanics around uh, laser um, technology, they even were starting uh, developing microchip optoelectronics. So many departments, and when the Berlin Wall came down and there was no, no, no employment at that time, so many of these people founded their own companies that's why the ecosystem looks like this um, and always a strong cooperation in between industry and academia that academia that's what uh, made our region really successful that's um, what 
is behind uh, that. So um, we are one of the, at the moment, biggest uh, optical clusters in Europe. I can say we are cooperating in between Germany with the clusters in Berlin. Also, I know that uh, Takisan, who will later present strong cooperation in uh, within uh, the Berlin area, which is close uh, to our drive from us. So also we are working uh, closely with the colleagues in Berlin, also in Bavaria and in Baden-Württemberg, Hess and the northern parts of Germany as well. So, um, but uh, I uh, can uh, somehow say that here in the region, we are one of the biggest, one of the dance, and you can find any kind of partner in between the value chain of optical technology. So we are taking care of technological topics, so cooperating in between uh, topics that are on the technological side. So. Uh, introducing project ideas, bringing people together, offering a platform and formats and events where people can exchange. We are part of uh, certain uh, projects and to uh, foster that interaction in between the players. So it's very necessary and all of you know that that we need to take care of high end education research. Um, we would want to provide a lively uh, environment. So we're closely working also here with local economic development agencies, like for example, the Hamamatsu agency of innovation, uh, people taking care of having, um, you know, attracting people to our place. We are more and more, um, um, uh, you know, active within um, sustainability topics, energy saving, energy efficiency like this. And of course, we are somehow um, uh, or at the moment a lot since last year, uh, focusing uh, mostly on um, workforce development as well as there's a lack of people who want to join optics that may be a, a, a case in many of the international optics regions. So um, yeah, what's what, what we are also doing in internationalization, it's one of our, uh, uh, also of our tasks and that's it within this um, uh, topic, we uh, for a long time ago, we took um, the chance to uh, visit Japan. It was in um, 2003, but I want to uh, explain a bit more on, on how our um, network uh, started. So we are there for more than 20 years now. And we had a network idea from uh, bottom up. So 13 founding, ma founding members, a mixture of academia and uh, industry said we need to have a strong network. And that's when they founded Optonet. And since 2001, there's a management office. And we are now um, cooperating here in the city of Vienna for more than 20 years, as I said before. So there's 79 companies, 15 startup. We have education research organizations among our uh, membership HR agencies uh, that also taking care of HR topics, uh, uh, gathering people uh, regarding um, workforce development topics. And also we have associations and other supporters. For example, it gets more and more uh, important to um, connect with the application site. So that's why, for example, we have also the semiconductor cluster in Dresden, Silicon Saxony is a cross cluster member with us so that we can also have the exchange. And also with the automotive cluster, for example, we signed a cooperation agreement um, to bring the application site together with our technology providers and members. So the majority of our products uh, or uh, is within optical uh, components, optics and mechanics, the red part in the middle. That's due to, of course, Carl Zeiss history. We are famous for high-end components, ultra precision manufacturing of um, high-end components as fierce free forms. We are well recognized uh, within the free form optics uh, topic, uh, closely related to that metrology, of course, sensing as well. There's a strong cluster in between our companies and uh, industry here in laser and radiation sources, but also the material, fiber, micro and fiber optics, optoelectronics, and lighting technology. So this is uh, the technology fields that is covered um, uh, among our membership. So I listed the application areas uh, according to their order of um, the amount where they deliver to. So manufacturing is the uh, the, the biggest field where uh, our members um, supply to. So this is manufacturing, industrial thing, uh, uh, industrial manufacturing, telecommunication and IT. On the third position, there's medical technology and life sciences. Uh, one third of our membership is supplying mobility and automotive, for example, for the manufacturing of cars, but also the components within the car, thinking of um, laser material processing in between, but also testing of batteries, 
studies and everything. So inspection test systems, everything related to imaging, um, but also the components itself in the core, thinking of head-up displays and uh, LiDAR systems, sensing uh, directly implemented in the core and, uh, and uh, some others, of course. And energy and resources is the topic and the field which is um, emerging uh, among the application areas. Fortunately, so who is driving Optonet? So this is, um, uh, as we are in SME region, uh, the head and chair is uh, Dr. Thorst Mosner from Grintech. There's also a corporation, Takisan knows Grintech well, um, uh, and uh, we also have Zeiss Yen Optik among our uh, board, but also Fraunhofer IOF, who are very famous, and uh, some other. Um, SME who are strategic uh, wise uh, working or, or um, uh, yeah, uh, so giving the direction on uh, how this network uh, will go to and regularly meeting with us. So having a, a good management of this um, network. So this is our team. We are a team of five taking care of at the moment 116 companies. We also have one student uh, working for us. We are located in the city of Jena, very green. Also, you see it in my uh, in my background. Um, so what we are actually doing, what are the services that we provide? So um, the major part is technology competence to foster that, bringing people together, offering workshops, um, uh, qualification in high-end optical design uh, uh, seminars, for example, optical coatings. So uh, bring to be people together Germany wide, but also international, we have summer courses in simulation and so on. Internationalization, um, organizing trips, um, being together with people abroad. So in this field, we have been to Japan for uh, several years, workforce development, as I said before, startup support promoting our location and also the, the pure networking, if I can say it like that. Maybe uh, focusing a bit more on technology, so ultra short pulse laser among the laser technology side. Um, I mentioned ultra precision manufacturing, uh, where we have gas from the US and uh, also from Japan and others joining um, the seminar. So last year we had also one partner that we met among uh, 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 the journey. So we met in the beginning of September last year and one of the partners um, joined this ultra precision manufacturing two weeks later, which uh, really is a good example. So where we have interaction also technology wise, we are um, supporting a big um, um, uh, uh, R&D projects within in, 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 at the moment in between quantum sensing and ultra short pulse laser technology. This is quantify sensing Ucapinio. We are also part of European projects. So here I have this example. So um, yeah, our focus region is Western Europe, of course, because uh, it's it's around us. Um, uh, but also Japan, US, Israel is uh, partners that we are working with. So here is a picture uh, from the last visit we did to Japan in September. Unfortunately, I myself couldn't attend OPIE uh, in spring this year. But in September, we have been together with um, some companies. You see, Dr. Optics, there was ID loop, um, that time, uh, and many others. So this was uh, split it into two groups, um, people from GTAI, so the German trade and Germany trade and invest who also supported this cluster exchange. And uh, in this picture, we visited Murakami R&D Center to also have um, exchange. And when we have challenges within automotive um, companies here in Germany, I also uh, shared uh, challenges with them. So this is why we are meeting and we have a really detailed outcome uh, of that. So Optonet also organizing the Gl Global Photonics Alliance is a club of dedicated cluster people meeting regularly at the big shows in, for example, Munich next week or um, Photonics West, for example. So we know partners in all the European countries within optics and photonics uh, cluster wise. Um, also in the US, so at the moment there's more than uh, 30 people and also uh, colleagues uh, from Japan joined that um uh, club several times. So a bit more on our cooperation uh, in detail. So we had first contacts to Hamamatsu in 2003. Uh, there was a signing of a memoranda of understanding three times in 2010, 16 and 2021. 20, so um, we exchange information. We regularly meet having delegation visits. If there's co companies coming from Japan, we um, host them here making appointments. So this is also my announcement for the 
group of attendees here today. Whenever you feel or you want to connect to someone here in our region, uh, we are the neutral part to help you find the right part. And I had requests for some uh, laser hats, some components, uh, and I advised them who to go to and also supported in making appointments. And also we here at our place have a, um, a, a seminar room where you can uh, meet in a neutral surrounding. So um, yeah, and together we also fostered uh, international funding projects. So uh, one time I went to Japan, we discussed together with uh, Takisan to Miti and Max and others how international R&D funding maybe could be supported. So these uh, are some examples uh, why we meet and what are the results. Also some pictures um, all the time we enjoyed very much. Among micro optics uh, in Berlin, there was uh, several uh, visits there. Here we brought a group to uh, um, an um, biometric uh, sensing company. And also this was a, um, a visit to Hamamatsu. Here you see Taki-san uh, and also the memo signing of memorandum of understanding. We have the director of Rauno for IOF and uh, representatives from the ministry as well. And here also another exchange with an interesting startup here in our region. Um, so what we always love to do is uh, bringing you together here with uh, partners to cooperate uh, in between your um, several fields. And for, for um, uh, a meeting in, uh, in Tokyo, I prepared, I was thinking a lot about why uh, is this partnership successful and uh, lasting over these long years. So what we also can see here, there's commitment of public organizations and also of industry partners. It's many personal contacts. So, um, but even in pandemic, we had online meetings with Hamamatsu Agency of Innovation, for example. Um, it's uh, our shared uh, enthusiasm for the industry, for photonics itself and optics. And somehow um, uh, is that uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, let's say, as we have a kind of similar legal framework, reliable structures and so on. So this cannot be neglected that this is a success factor. Um, we are intercultural aware, I would say. We know that we are different. So this is a very, um, you know, amazing and trustful cooperation. And we have the support of funding authorities and agencies, um, which creates kind of trust. And I hope that this webinar also contrib contributes to this um, attitude that both uh, sides of us share. So um, I uh, allowed myself to ask for what we would, for example, uh, are looking for. We are also looking for business contacts in Japan. I sometimes hear that uh, companies are looking for um, distributors in different regions. Um, suppliers are getting more and more interesting component wise. Um, we are looking also for joint research projects in different fields. Um, but also what is the challenge that the clusters uh, have and um, I will We'll discuss with Takisan how we can, you know, bring out the photonics challenges out of the uh, um, application or side of the end users uh, or the uh, industry that is. Um, using photonics in between their own systems. So medical diagnostics and treatment, what are the challenges in, uh, in that field? Uh, in between mobility, what are your uh, manufacturers are looking for uh, so that we can have maybe joint events, Japanese car makers, German car makers, or others or mobility providers, um, maybe share the challenges that we can um, share with our members, which um, makes sense somehow. Um, climate and energy, more and more um, applications uh, come out of that and manufacturing. So if there's any partnerships in between application, I share the challenge that we had from Continental Automotive to some Japanese uh, partners in our field, um, maybe to work together also more in that field to focus maybe on events um, on the application side. Yeah, so I think we are strong in an international network. Here we see Goshi Mutasan, who uh, retired from the Hamamatsu Agency of Innovation um and your other colleague also uh, changed in between uh, JETRO, but uh, this was the group of Global Photonics Alliance where we connected together with Japanese colleagues. We have Canada, we have Arizona, Scotland. Here there was uh, Tom Badley from New York Photonics, also Yuki from Finland, from Bavaria and from the Netherlands and some others. So some example uh, proven that we are uh, cooperating. Uh, yeah, and um, this is uh, actually already the end of my presentation. Um, we are 
very much looking forward uh, to connect uh, connect you here in our region and we also are really thankful if you can connect us uh, like we did in the last years and I'm really happy that I will see uh, Taki-san uh, and hopefully get to know some others here in the uh, webinar also from the uh, audience to meet at Laser Munich next week Taki I'm really looking forward to meet in person uh, where we also will discuss uh, future cooperation thank you very much for your attention I'm open for questions um, afterwards, right, uh, Ms. Magyar, that we can do in the Q&A session. I will be here. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, we are going to have a Q&A, and I would like to ask the audience to please uh, type their uh, questions in the Q&A box. Uh, we can actually screen questions beforehand, so if you would like to get your answers to your queries in real time, I strongly encourage you to do that uh, as soon as possible. So we would actually have ample time um, to reply. Uh, thank you so much for the very interesting presentation. It is fascinating to listen to you know, what kind of initiatives and, and uh, uh, results uh, you have in this field. And um, we are very much looking forward to answering questions. So dear audience, please submit your queries. Our next presenter is Yoshiro Takiguchi, and he's going to talk about collaborative businesses with Turingen. Okay, uh, good afternoon, konnichiwa, and good morning, ohayou gozaimasu in Germany or Europe. The real business collaboration in photonics with the Turingia people in Hamamatsu uh, we actually, as Anke mentioned, we started this kind of collaborative work for long enough time, more than 10 years. And then I was, uh, uh, you know, in uh, the involving those kind of businesses uh, from academic side, academic side, side, and also the company side. So let me talk about the situation. Uh, let's see. Oops. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Who am I? So then, my name is Takiguchi. I'm born in 1958, and actually, I'm graduated from the Nagoya University in nuclear engineering. So my basic uh, the uh, 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 technology is nuclear engineering. Then got a PhD in EE uh, electrical engineering from the City College of New York, uh, and also I was working at Hamamatsu Photonics KK in Japan Hamamatsu for. Uh, more than 40 years. So my background is nuclear engineering, but they're also in photonics. So, and also uh, Hamamatsu is actually started the uh, graduate school. The name is the GPI, the graduate school for the creation of new photonics industries, uh, like 17, 18 years ago. And then Hamamatsu Photonics, actually I was working at, uh, sent me this uh, to this uh, graduate school uh, to the, as a, the, uh, a professor to teach the uh, people in the school uh, for uh, the photonics technologies. So then actually that's the last five years I was uh, serving as a president of the GPI to connect the people from Japan to Europe or to the US. Uh, because the graduate school is actually for business people, not for young students. Uh, the student has to realize two things, uh, real business, and real science or engineering. So both technological things and the, the uh, business things have to be done for the PhD programs. This is actually a special uh, PhD program in Japan also they very important for the photonics people too. So then uh, because of those background, I was trying to, uh, you know, trying to work with the uh, uh, different kind of photonics area uh, internationally. German is one of the important uh, the collaborative countries because Germany, as you know, that has uh, a lot of optical activities, uh, not only in Jena, but in Munich, Berlin, uh, Aachen, whatever location, they do have many kinds of photonics technologies. So then let me introduce that Hamamatsu. Uh, Hamamatsu is actually the uh, located in the middle in the Japan and they, we call central area of Japan. Uh, so it, it's like one hour 30 minutes from Tokyo and also one hour 30 minutes from Osaka. It's a good location. Uh, so we do have big, uh, good businesses, uh, not only for photonics, but also automotive and then uh, motorcycle, as I mentioned here. 
Uh, this is actually the uh, on the uh, the right hand side. Uh, Hamamatsu Photonics is actually located in Hamamatsu City, and the Suzuki and Yamaha are actually uh, located in this, this Hamamatsu City too. So we do have a lot of uh, activity in businesses. And as a, the Churinji, Yena, and other uh, the, uh, the uh, cities has a large company card size, the short as uh, Anke mentioned, and they also. Um, in our side, uh, we do work with uh, the university people and also the uh, city or uh, the governmental organizations. Uh, then like here, uh, Tom Valley Center is actually the, uh, uh, the uh, governmental organization who uh, they are trying to connect the people from the uh, SMEs to uh, large companies and SMEs to uh, the Europe U uh, the, or US. So they are very active for these kind of the uh, developing uh, new businesses for SMEs. And Shizuka University, Hamamatsu Medical School are actually very much the important, uh, the, the academia for photonics. Uh, they are uh, working not only technical things, but also the medical applications, uh, the medical devices, and there are so many things. And then, of course, we do have many startups, including my company too. Uh, so uh, then, then of course, the uh, 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 in Churinjir, you do have LEG, Optinet, very good at the, uh, the organization for photonics and also for developing new businesses. And of course, uh, there are uh, a lot of the university, including Yena University, Illumin uh, Illum um, I forgot, uh, TU Illumini, and also the uh, uh, Silla University. There are so many good universities there too, uh, who are teaching, uh, they are teaching a lot of photonics technology too. And B5 Optics, that is uh, one of the member of the Optonet, is actually a company startups uh, working with me for a long enough time. So we met uh, B5 Optics uh, more than 10 years ago and started working together for new businesses. It's not easy, so, but we are still trying to uh, find out something new businesses together. So this is the collaborative work together. For, uh, we had a, a delegation from Yena. Uh, this is the one example, like 2016. Uh, September, uh, we got uh, uh, people from Yenna, uh, then, and they also, we had a business a trip, uh, the people from uh, the, the delegation people from uh, uh, ministry from Germany also, uh, there are so many good, uh, the uh, discussion we had. And as Anke mentioned, we do have MOU with the uh, uh, Turingia and Hamamatsu cities, uh, the uh, Person and I look at the standing uh, uh, second from the right side is the former ma uh, the mayor of the Hamamatsu city, and she he is a very good person for businesses. He was trying to organize good business connection with Europe too. So this was a very important activity from the uh, governmental side too. And we do have visit to the uh, different location in Yena. This is the uh, I guess. Uh, 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 one of the institute in Vienna, uh, we had a very good discussion for scientific and engineering uh, uh, works. So now let me try to uh, the uh, the uh, put a one issue uh, for everybody here. Uh, it is important issue, very important issue for very near future for uh, our world, Earth. Uh, first of all, this is the uh, uh, population chart. We are uh, 2023, we have uh, 8 billion people on, on the earth right now. But then, as you know that we do, we're gonna have 20% more people in by 2050 or so. So we have 10 billion people on the earth then. So it is very important for us to find out uh, how to uh, the, uh, uh, put a 20% uh, more people in the world and how to uh, get enough food, energies, and like that one. Uh, so this is actually very important topics we have to really think about or for the, as a business and also as the, uh, as the environmental viewpoint. And that there are so many things we have to think about for this 20% increase of the populations in the world. 
And also this is a kind of chart that we're going to have more people in Africa. Uh, this red region is uh, actually increasing the population. Green region is decreasing the populations. So we do, as you see, if Korea, you see that we have more people in Africa and less people in, in Europe and Asia regions. So we need to find out this balance uh, the, the, or population balance in near future, how to support or how to uh, rearrange this kind of economic or environment situation in 10, 20 years. So this is a very important topics we have to really think about as a business people too. So then to, to realize those kind of business or uh, interna international activities, of course, open innovation uh, among different companies or the uh, universities, startups, and also the open innovation network uh, is also very important uh, key topics. Namely, uh, if each companies or university work very hard for their innovation, that's okay. But connecting those innovation is much more important for our futures. So we have to work together to realize these good innovation networks to uh, for that kind of 20% uh, uh, increase of the population problems. So we have to work with, with that. So that not only uh, those large companies, startups, universities, SMEs also have to involve finance people and also governmental people or colleges people or have to really involve those kind of networking. So by connecting those people, this is actually the uh, uh, most important thing, not only Japan, Germany, but also the internationally uh, in the world. We, it is very, very important. It's not the time for the world, it's time for the collaboration. So as Anke also mentioned, photonics is actually key enabling technology. There are so many things we can do together uh, energy, quantum information, traffic sensing, water safety, food, and also agriculture or fishery, forestry uh, are actually kind of a uh, new direction that photonics technology have to work on together because you do have a lot of you know, forestry too and agriculture. So they require photonics technologies uh, to uh, make their uh, business better or uh, at the make the vegetables or fishing stuff a much more efficient way. So this is actually a kind of uh, new trend for the photonics. We also uh, work on that too. So next, uh, as Ankis I mentioned, we do have laser uh, the photonics show uh, in Munich next week. And then uh, I do work, try to connect with these different uh, the several companies uh, talking about agriculture application of photonics technologies. We need some more technologies from you side. And also we give some kind of system idea to your side too for future agriculture too. So uh, as also this, there are so many uh, opportunity, business opportunities for us to work on uh, using photonics technology, sensor technologies, uh, light LED technology, laser technology, or information technology are all based on photonics technologies. We do have to, uh, you know, really think about how to efficiently use those kind of uh, knowledge uh, for our futures. So, collaborative work together uh, with you and our uh, people in Hamamatsu and Japan are uh, very much important for this kind of the applications. So, let me uh, show you a simple example. Uh, this is the uh, B5 optics, uh, UG and Yena. Uh, we worked together, as I mentioned, for more than 10 years. Uh, B5 Optics is actually making uh, short wavelengths infrared uh, optics, uh, as you see here. And I'm working in, in Hamamatsu City and try to work, they design some uh, systems, uh, like for the satellite, assist, satellite telescope system or agriculture detection system or spectroscopy system, like, like that one. So collaborate your work together with those people in Yenna. I think it is a really important uh, activity we, we could make and that we are trying to work on that for future businesses like this one. So we actually, we are trying to send those kind of telescope system uh, designed by ourselves and then make the, some devices at Yenna so we try to send this kind of system onto the, the, the uh, above the surface. 
to realize the space communications. So this is a kind of one of the application we are looking at. So then uh, now, so you in Germany, and this is the Yana, but uh, you have a unique culture. We do have different uh, unique cultures. Those kind of cultural difference is very important, but we need to work together to realize new, new businesses, right? So then uh, you have good people. Uh, here you have Shindra-san <laughs> from Optonet now and other guys there. Uh, we do have good people. You do have good people. And you have warm heart. Uh, this is the kind of location uh, located in Yena. I, I don't remember exactly where it was. A uh, winery there, a uh, wine, the store shop, uh, very close to the bridge or somewhere. Anyway. So we enjoy visiting you to, uh, in Vienna and Germany and connect, communicating together like this way uh, by having those kind of people-to-people -people interactions or part of interaction is a key issue, right? We need to work uh, from heart to make real businesses for future world, right? And this is the kind of world that I like. Uh, this is Japanese and it's a... Uh, uh, calligrapher Mitsu Aida wrote this way, and this is the kind of things that uh, if we use the start of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, how do you call, um, uh, the fight for the, the food, food or something, you don't have much, but if you share, you have enough. So this kind of world is the, the really important uh, current situation in the world. So cross-border and international collaboration will give sustainable ecosystem like, like this uh, Mr. Mitsuo said. So uh, we do like to have this kind of collaborative to share our ideas. So now in conclusion, let's work together, uh, not only in photonics technology, but also we do like to work together for many uh, directions in our, our future. So anyway, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any question, please ask later. Thank you so much. Thank you very much again for the very inspiring presentation. Um, you have introduced the Hamamatsu region and the work that you've been doing with the German partners extensively. I'm sure that there will be several questions and I'm looking forward to hearing more about this project. Our last presenter today is Valérie Doldrup and she's coordinator at the International Startup Campus Siena Hina University. The title of her presentation is Central German and Japanese Research and Startup Cooperation, Activities and Future Perspectives. I personally am very much looking forward to this um, uh, talk as we try to connect university uh, students, graduate students, inventors with companies. And um, as a part of Horizon Europe Pillar 2, it is one of our most important mandates to try to facilitate these uh, cooperations. So if you could please proceed with your presentation, it's in full screen mode now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you very and much for your presentation. Please don't forget the questions. So those of you who attend and are listening to these great presentations, please do not forget to type your queries in the Q&A box. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much for the introduction and also thank you very much Anke and Takiguchi-san for the great uh, introduction to our ecosystem. Actually, um, our activities at the International Startup Campus um, directing at Japan would not exist uh, without this cooperation between Japan and Hamamatsu actually, because what we would like to do is uh, to build on trustful relations and existing networks and also enable young researchers and startups uh, to follow the people that uh, already built uh, these relations in the last years. Um, I am representing um, the Thuringian part uh, of a university uh, alliance uh, of the three biggest universities in central Germany, uh, in the triangle of central Germany, uh, Halle, Jena, Leipzig. Um, this region is uh, between Berlin and Munich, located um, quite easily uh, reachable by the ICE train, so the German Shinkansen, not as nice as the Japanese Shinkansen, but it's uh, quite fast to reach uh, Munich and Berlin and get off at Erfurt and Halle 
and uh, Leipzig to, to visit also our region. And um, so it's quite easy for you to get access to a network, uh, not only in optics and photonics as in introduced, but also in life sciences, material sciences, and many other technologies located in our region. Um, what do we bring in? We bring in the networks of our universities, which also include uh, research institutions, but also many small um, other universities in our, our region. I, the region uh, is traditionally an area where trade routes crossed. And uh, again, they, they cross, as I, I mentioned, uh, the trade routes between Berlin and Munich, but also Dresden and Frankfurt, for example, east to west. And uh, as we have a high density of university and research, and of course, high tech companies, quite young high tech companies in the region, um, also startups have a clear industrial focus uh, and B2B business models, um, startups coming out of our universities usually globalize uh, quite fast. And that's why we you joined forces in, in the region to enable them to do that quite early. Um, as mentioned, uh, I represent Jena. Actually, uh, Anko also introduced uh, Jena, but um, to give you some, some more information, if you're interested also about activities in the research uh, sector of Uni, uh, University of Jena, uh, and uh, use uh, the blog in the internet, which is linked here uh, to our profile line light, uh, which is of course linked to the photonics uh, cluster in Jena. Jena University is of course part of Optonet and many of the spin-off companies become uh, usually also members of Optonet. So we are quite uh, linked in, in the region. And um, we had some successes also in the last years um, as a startup region since Jena is, uh, yeah, has a high density of high tech companies and the universities. We are usually ranked quite high also in Germany as a startup ecosystem for high tech startups. So it's a nice entry point uh, also to the German ecosystem since all institutions are also uh, not only worldwide, but also, of course, um, uh, linked in Germany and uh, in contact with other photonic um, regions. Um, why do we have such a um, high proportion of uh, high tech startups in our region? Um, we have a very good tradition in technology transfer, which already started actually with Carl Zeiss 200 years ago uh, in a close co co collaboration with Ernst Aber at Jena University. But still, we um, we have a really established process at the university and other institutions to support researchers to find their way either to cooperate with companies or to build their own company. Um, we have maker spaces in the, in the region. We have many offerings from IP to uh, qualification of any kind to start a business. Um, we also have entry points, which are nice for researchers or startups uh, that would like to, to get in contact with the different institutions. One of them is a digital innovation hub for Dernix, which is coordinated by the Fraunhofer and all institutions in Jena, which are doing research in uh, photonics uh, in this consortium. And uh, usually the call is end of the year. so. Um, please note uh, end of the year as a time uh, where you can get a two page, uh, make a two pager and uh, send it in when the next call starts to get in contact with the institutions and um, win uh, research money. So it's actually um, a three months research uh, researcher that can support you to further develop for example, prototypes or uh, start a project with the institutions involved. 
So why have we started the International Startup Campus? Um, I already mentioned technology startups are globalizing uh, quite fast. One other factor is um, we have a high proportion or increasing proportion of internationals at our universities and research institutions at Jena University right now. It's 15% international students and doctoral candidates, it's uh, one fourth. So 25% are already internationals. So when you're uh, studying in Jena or would like to start a business in Jena, um, English language offerings are offered. Uh, so um, everybody knows English, so if you know English, it's no problem to go come to Jena and start doing your research or start your business. Uh, what we would like uh, to do together is to give more visibility as a region um, to link with partners in Japan, but also um, invite Japanese network partners to our region. So if you contact one of us, um, we are all we all know each other in the region so that you can get connected quite easily. Um, just some statistics why, why we did that, uh, how our um, spin-off companies are characterized. Uh, so as you can see, almost 100% are knowledge intensive or R&D intensive and uh, one third is patent based and yeah as you can see almost half is venture capital based this uh, survey uh, was based on 42 companies which we asked uh, some years ago and uh, what we also found out that they start thinking about international markets for example uh, when they they start their patent process before founding their company and that's why it's so important uh, to give more information about um, offerings and partners we have worldwide uh, so that they can also build their networks quite early and when they start uh, to enter new markets that they can also rely on these networks that the universities offer. So why have, why have you chosen um, uh, East Asia and Japan? Of course, we, we can see that um, for many of the companies, either the US or um, East Asia has been an important uh, factor as a future market. Uh, we also asked for R&D activities. I think it, it can be higher than the startups actually uh, mentioned at that point of time. 3% uh, said that they would like to have Japan as a research partner but uh, or have Japan as a research partner. But I think this uh, has more potential to increase. But uh, as you can see, 23% uh, see Japan as an important market. And so we uh, started uh, to have Japan as important uh, focus country in our initiative, um, since we would like to pro promote startup growth, not only in our region, uh, um, we also like to do that together with you in your region, in Japan or wherever you are. We would like to increase the diversity of our startup teams, to have more international teams, to have German Japanese uh, teams in the future, since many researchers already know each other. Many of our uh, German researchers have been already to Japan, for example, at Shizuoka University. So it would be quite nice to really build on that. So we offer our universities as door openers uh, to other research in institutions, but also uh, for companies. Um, what we offer in general is many matchmaking events, trade fairs, workshops, qualification, also a Japanese startup or researcher team that want to build a company in our region will be supported the same way, of course. Um, so we have contact persons uh, in, in every city with a university that can take care of the idea and the startup. Um, what is interesting for you is also you, you can meet uh, international start startups in central Germany. We offer many events where you can get to know each other. And uh, as you can see here, how we build on the existing relations. These are um, actually uh, partner countries of Jena University. 
um, Anko already mentioned the Global Photonics Alliance. So as you can see, we are all um, building international networks and, and Japan, Japanese partners can also uh, participate or of course are already part of it. Uh, Yena University has already more than 15 Japanese uh, institutionalized partners. So we have many more informal ones, but we have contracts with more than 15 and in, in the region and uh, our three universities more than 30. And uh, these are pictures of current visits this year. You can see it uh, also on the website I mentioned earlier of our profile line. Um, a researcher from uh, Shizuoka uh, that, um, uh, how, how to say, imported his uh, laboratory in microscopy uh, to Yina University. He is a guest professor here. And um, so he established this laboratory or exported the laboratory from Shizuoka to Yina University. And of course, we are quite thankful for th such relations <clears throat> that the research on, on materials can uh, be uh, supported here as well with its uh, equipments. And the other one is a delegation from the at the Leib uh, Leibniz Institute for a uh, conference in May, I think. And uh, these are just pictures from our last, oh, sorry, last trip in uh, April to Japan. Our visits at um, Riken and Osaka University, um, where the startup OpenUC2, uh, the founder already studied, or two co-founders already studied uh, during their PhD in Japan, so they know Japanese. Uh, they got feedback for uh, from from Japanese students and researchers um, for their product. It, uh, if you're interested to, to know more, I can also write the name of the startup in, in the chat later. It's called OpenUC2. So you can use a modular uh, microscopy set uh, for, for example, for your students at universities or schools or at also at the companies. Uh, this is uh, the OPIE. Anka already mentioned, uh, we were together with the trade promotion agency uh, of Thuringia at uh, the trade fair. And as you can see, we had many opportunities to interact with Japanese partners. And I think it has been quite successful. Here are also some, some pictures of uh, yeah, company visits. Uh, last year, we had some pictures here in, in Kobe and Tokyo as well in Hamamatsu. And um, yeah, we see more potential for joint innovation projects. I think we are actually just at the beginning is my feeling because I, I see there's a lot of interaction, a lot of openness, a lot of ideas that want to be realized. So we are planning our next market discovery uh, trip to Japan end of November. And we are very happy uh, to hear from you if you, you would like uh, to support us when we come to Japan end of November. Um, here you can see some of the startups <clears throat> that have been uh, together with us. One is, for example, ID Loop that has also been to Japan right now with the German Accelerator. Uh, they also joined uh, the trip together with Optionet last year. Um, when you're here in Germany, we have events uh, which you can join regularly. We also had a Japan Day uh, two years ago. Maybe we have another one this year. Uh, I'm also happy to know if you are interested uh, to join or to give some input. Uh, you can meet us in Leipzig next week uh, for the Born Global Startup Festival at the Machen uh, Festival, which is a startup festival in, in Leipzig. So please uh, have a look at our website and our social media channels to know more. And um, yeah, so again, my invitation, if you would like uh, to, to support or have questions, you can always contact us. We are always happy to introduce Japanese networks and Japanese startup and research ecosystems um, here in Germany. Um, so we are there quite open and please don't hesitate to contact me or my colleagues. Thank you so much again for the great presentation. I'm sure there will be quite a few questions.
all three of you have uh, outlined a, a flourishing, uh, very well established and um, a thorough collaboration that you have at hand. And uh, it is indeed an inspiration to many of those who are at the beginning of their collaboration process. There are some questions in the chat, and I would like to invite my colleague, uh, Tasia Maiseva, to proceed with the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yudet. Uh, let me take over from here. Uh, my name is Tatsuya Maisawa, and I'm also uh, from Euraccess Japan. So uh, we have question in the chat box, and let me address uh, to the presenters. So the question is to all the presenters. And do you prefer to working with startups or with university labs not yet established as startups? So I assume that uh, he is not established uh, entity, but <clears throat> so for presenters, could you please respond to this question? I have, uh, well, let, me, let me answer one thing. Uh, actually, I have a contact with the Yana University students company. Uh, that's a microscopy company, as uh, the uh, Boris mentioned. Uh, we, I would like to see him uh, ah, 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 right? Uh, uh, and, yeah, yeah. Next, next week. Yes. Yeah. So I will visit your uh, the the uh, booth in uh, laser photonics, and we will discuss how to uh, the uh, proceed the, your uh, startup ap application in Japan. So we do have different kind of education system compared with the German education system. So they, uh, then the, your students or a student company have to know the, the difference with education system. So, so, so I would like to talk about this kind of difference and also discuss about how to really uh, make business in Japan for your students. So we are very much interested in working together with uh, Yana University student. So thank you. Thank you very much, Takiguchi-san. And I think Anke-san has something to say too. Yeah, so, so thank you all for the interest in all of our three presentations. And maybe let me take this example of Open UC2, Reni Lachman-san, which is a good example in how all of the three of us are working with the startups or let's say R&D groups in university uh, differently. So um, Open UC2 once was a, a group in, in a science institute. and. From that time on, uh, they already addressed us to find partners in industry who have access to microscopy studies, to microscopy industry partners, to in that stage already do some market research. What are the challenges customers have and so on. So that's when Optonet helped them or made an appointment with the industry partner already when they're working in universities because we are really technology focused. We need to know who is working on what in, in between industry when they have not been founded yet as an LTD or in Germany GmbH. Once they found their company, they can get become member of us as an official official company. And from that time on, they are free of charge because we are financed also with membership fees uh, for three years from the moment of founding. So we need to have these startups because they are mostly working on high end or new latest technology in their fields. So, but what we are focusing on is on industry and sales contacts for them. So, and that's where maybe I can hand over to Valerie because she has another mission, but also Valerie mentioned Deep N, who are at still uh, uh, R&D group at the Institute, not founded yet, but we are already working with them, make, let them present among young students and to get to know what are they working on, but they are not members with us yet due to how they have not been founded, but we know all of them. So Valerie, maybe you can explain on what your mission is with the groups. Thank you very much, Anke-san. So I think Valerie san Kenna. Uh, add some information. Actually, I, don't, I don't have much to add because, because yeah, we're, we're working in this, in, in this network to uh, give them market feedback as soon as possible. 
uh, and to bring them to customers. And this can be uh, also in Japan, not only in Germany, but also in Japan, uh, when we see potential there. And um, of course, we also would like to see it the other way around. We also welcome uh, teams from Japan that uh, even before founding their companies need some feedbacks from our ecosystem. I mean, everybody of us is, is opening uh, their networks uh, to, to welcome these teams and students, yes. Thank you very much. I think it uh, cleared uh, some of his, uh, his questions. So I have received several questions from the audience. And this question is to Anke-san. So, what steps were needed to jumpstart the collaboration with Hamamatsu besides the three MOUs? So there might be several chances to boost the collaboration network with Hamamatsu. Okay, did I get it right? So the question is, what made this cooperation start that in the end was, you know, you know, Successful. fundamentalized uh, with right. the MOUs? Yes, it was in the beginning, I, I think, or also ca it can be compared to other corporations that we have. But with Japan, I think that was the initial point is, you need to meet personally, you, know, you need to meet committed people that start a sustainable relationship and then it was technology wise where we had the same base that time and the commitment of the public authorities to say we have an interesting and strong industry in each of our regions so why not working together with the mission takisan mentioned so uh, where you feel safe where you feel uh, well that's where you start and i think that was a suggestion i don't i, I haven't been opting at that time but i think it takes initial point um, to say, okay, why not work together um, officially and uh, a memorandum of understanding is a, a quite unique, or a quite a successful um, tool to, you know, clarify or specify a cooperation that you have with partners in Japan. And it was in the MOU, it said that we are sharing events that we are going to meet regularly so that you have a base um, on uh, on what you are, what, what the cooperation is based on. And that was successful. And then they saw, okay, this MOU was filled, why not to renew it? And, but this is a us as the networkers by heart is really necessary to to see each other's faces to uh, get to know to have a sustainable uh, uh, a relation that you can feel okay you can rely on and uh, uh, giving and sharing like Taki said so that you say okay we are willing to share to have the reach a same goal thank you anke san okay uh there is another question to anke san and uh, in your presentation, you mentioned that your network is also seeking opportunities for joint research. So do you currently have any ongoing research projects conducted internationally? And have you ever utilized any EU funding programs such as Horizon Europe? Yeah, at the moment, uh, maybe start with the second part of the question. At the moment, so uh, as I presented on, is really the, to foster innovation, and that's also a benefit that the international startup campus can do, because they are gathering startups from different fields of research. So innovation always is created once you see different, you know, input, different uh, uh, technologies, different um, approaches so and uh, what I wanted to say is um, so when we uh, 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 look at that that uh, photonics as a key enabling technology like Takisan mentioned we need to know about the challenges of the application side so how can photonics uh, support uh, wind energy how can support photonics can solve we here in Germany we have a really big problem with a buck um, who is destroying the forest due to uh, draw to droughts that we have more and more here weather gets warmer so what's going on in the forest to save that um, and 
And uh, so European Union fostering also that cooperation. So we are part of a project uh, with 50 European partners where um, we need to, as Optonet do outreach to uh, the applicational side. So whenever you have kind of optics technology in one of your systems or products, you can get funding out of Photon Hub. That's the name of the project, for example. So this is among uh, within your uh, Horizon 2020. And um, uh, the other part of the question is if we ever have um, done uh, international research projects. So Taki-san and us, we, we both of us didn't mention, but we had a project going on that on the German side was funded to um, foster startup cooperation. Uh, it was some several years ago, but that's when also we both, Taki and I, went to Tokyo to see, okay, that's how we get as the industry partners can work together or foster international R&D because of the same thing. The, the multipliers do the uh, trust for relation, and then we need to have the public funding to support these technological ideas. So um, there's bilateral calls on um, uh, from the federal level, also from regional levels, where there's always often there's Japan as uh, uh, mentioned as a partner. So once there's uh, ideas, we can um, uh, support in finding other partners or say, Takisan, is there any one of you who has an idea working with the German partners so that we can do the matchmaking somehow? Yeah, let me add one Thank thing. You, uh, yeah, let me yeah. add one thing. Actually, we had uh, uh, the governmental budget two plus two. So the right, uh, then, then we try to work together with the front for institutions uh, in uh, the different locations, ILT in Arhen and the ISC in, uh, I forgot the location anyway. So we, to try, we were trying to have a real research joint collaborative work together between Japan and Germany. So uh, a couple of times already. Unfortunately, we didn't get money, but uh, we will try harder more to realize uh, good uh, research together. So anyway, this is the kind of situation. You, if you won't have research, please ask Anke san or me to find out partners in both sides, in Germany and Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. So there is a lot of potential for joint research in the near future. And of course, there uh, you can build on the partnership that you have already created. Okay, there are a lot of questions uh, for Takeguchi-san as well. So uh, this is a question: If it's not a secret, which are the most financially viable collaborations with Yena Churinjia? Wow, <laughs> economically successful, maybe uh, yes. Okay, yeah, there are a couple you know activities, uh, of course. Uh, the private sector are uh, willing to buy a couple of devices from Yena. Actually, I purchased a couple of devices from Yena already. As Anke san mentioned, Green Tech is one of the special, uh, the, the, the uh, technologically oriented company starting from Fraunhofer, right? And we purchased a couple of uh, new devices, which is very, very fine device in optics, which cannot be made in Japan. So we asked uh, Green Tech to make something. So this is kind of one of the application. And also there are uh, famous uh, aspheric optics company, Aspherican in Vienna. They do have very good aspheric optics, which cannot be done. So we are trying to work together with Aspheric and Aspherican to realize uh, space application optics. Uh, so there are so many, you know, the potential or real businesses we did already. And one of our students company from graduate school actually purchased a couple of laser system from the, the uh, company in Yenner, which as you know, but uh, I can't say that one. Uh, so we do have very good business together, even for students startup companies. So I think uh, there are good potentials. So already, so I can not say only small part of the names, but uh, there are so many actually I can, you know, later I can tell you uh, the, the privately anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. So far, we have learned that there are a lot of potentials of photonics in the businesses. So the collaboration can be extended further. But is there any obstacles that should be cleared by Japanese side or German side? Do you have any specific uh, 
problems that you want to mention? Actually, there is not real problems, only technical things, right? Uh, once you know the people in Germany, Europe, uh, we can work together. Budgetally, of course, we need support. Uh, Yena, they do have support from the, you know, uh, or the, the city, Hamamatsu city also supporting a lot of budget for the, those kind of collaborations. So uh, I think, you know, technically it's okay. But only thing sometimes Japanese SMEs cannot speak good English, which will prevent uh, good connections, right? So that kind of things is uh, just a small minor problems, but sometimes SMEs in Japan uh, hesitate to talk with you guys in English. So that is the only problem. But, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. So I think we just have to go forward and you know, talk with the Anke-san, you know, very sound, frankly, can we do this? Can we do that? So that's the kind of things important anyway. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Sorry, we are kind of running over time, but please bear with us for several more questions. So this is the other question to Takiguchi-san. Since this technology has wide reaching opportunities, in which field do you see exponential success in the near future, like energy, quantum, traffic sensors, blah, 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 but do you have any ideas on this? Well, actually, there are so many, as, as Anke-san also mentioned, and as Barisa also mentioned, uh, because, you know, currently we need, need the technologies, real and uh, uh, good technologies to the, the enhance the activity of, and in the, the, the efficiency of works. So uh, let's say a uh, couple, recently, Photon uh, Barrier Center receiving a lot of, you know, the uh, uh, request from the uh, agriculture farmer people right to you know or make the the you know work easier because agriculture as you know that is very hard work but get less money from the their vegetables whatever so they have to modify their business model or a working model to make it better otherwise young people will not come to this, their businesses so Recent, you know, the recent also the future important one with important target is agriculture. How to make the agriculture more efficient way or more a variable way, so that younger people can come to work for the farm. So this is actually one of the important topics too. And then, and as you said that, as I said that, uh, there will be a twenty percent more people in the world in. 30, 20, 30 years. So you have to have, eat something. So we need more farmers, efficient farmers. So that's a kind of, the, uh, actually we have to make the trend like that way, I believe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the final question to the presenter that I received. And this is a question to Valerie. Uh, is there a personalized mentorship available to newcomers who are trying to enter markets? Do you have a shadowing system in place or any other day-to-day hands-on support? So this is a question to, yeah, uh, it's about the, uh, yeah. Yeah, in case a, a founder's team or a startup needs a mentor, of course we try to find one um, who can accompany the the company not only one but maybe several because uh, depends on on the question and the topics it can be a top well the connection is kind of breaking but um okay i think she mentioned that uh, there is a support and depending on what the newcomer really Needs. So I think we have to stop here, even though uh, Valerie did not recover, but I think we have to wrap up because it's kind of running over time. So we have addressed all the questions and I would like to ask the presenters if you have any final message or anything else you would like to convey for the participants today. 
maybe not. Okay, thank you very much. So this concludes. Uh, uh, do you thing, have? Sorry, uh, yeah. Angus, first, you should say something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, first of all, of course, thank you for this opportunity. I think there's there were more questions than I expected, which is really good. So whenever any of you wants to connect on LinkedIn or send me an email, um, I will just type my email here. So feel free and feel encouraged to put your questions. We are ready to help. This would be my fi uh, final qu uh, message. Yeah. Okay. So then, actually, you know, for next week, we uh, I will uh, take bring about 10 people uh, present from the company, SMEs, to the Munich for the laser show, right? We will bring these, these people to Yenner, uh, the uh, Optonet the booth, or some Berlin partner mm -hmm. booth. So we do have a lot of connect in the connection there. So if you want to come to the uh, join this kind of you know activities, please send me information of yourself and uh, send just an email to me so then I can connect to you to the, those kind of activities. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Valerie Sun recovered, maybe not, but uh, I, we have to conclude the webinar. It's, it's kind of over time. So thank you very much, Anke san, Takeguchi san, and Valerie san for their informative presentations and in depth QA session. Also, I would like to thank all the participants for joining us today. I hope you have got some takeaways from today's webinar. If you have any further questions about today's webinar or Euraccess Japan in general, please don't hesitate to contact us at japan at euraccess.net. Also, the recording of today's webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel once it's ready. We will continue this Shinkansen Roadshow webinar series in future. And next week, we will have another Shinkansen webinar focusing on the cluster to cluster collaboration between Saitama and Bavaria of Germany. Besides this webinar series, we have a wide variety of events planned. For more information, please visit our portal and follow us on SNS such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and online. You can access them from our portal too. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us today. And we are looking forward to seeing you at our future events. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye now. <laughs>